Hi everyone, I am back with a, another tutorial. Um, this one was a request from one of our Facebook group users and their request was to make an adjustment for adding link. So for instance, if you are taller than the drafted body height that they draft a pattern for, typically that's like five, six. If you're taller, or shorter, you may need to adjust um, the height, uh, the length in these pattern pieces to adjust for your body proportions. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, an easy way to get that done on Inkscape and get you um, into your projector pattern. Uh, for me, I use Adobe and um, get your pieces cut out as quickly as possible. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and add a layer to begin with. And I like to label mine custom and set it in the layer above. I'm going to go ahead and open this window so that you can see all the, uh, oops, see the layers. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the nodes button and I'm going to work with the smallest size for both bodice pieces. I'm going to make adjustments to the front and to the back because any amount of length that is added or removed or <laughs> any length that is added or removed, oh I'm tongue tied, um, to your pattern pieces you should do to all corresponding um, pieces. So for instance, the bodice in this is broken up into two pieces. If you add length to one, you should add length to the other um, and vice versa for shortening as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select the smallest size here. I'm just going to use the smallest size for demonstration purposes. So we're going to go ahead and control D and get that layer. Oh, did I even do it? Let's try that again. I'm going to select the layer. There we go. And then control D to duplicate. Then layer, move selection to layer above. And as usual, Inkscape takes a second to think about what I'm asking it to do. There we go. It's moved it into layer, uh, into the custom layer. I'm also going to grab the dart piece because we don't want to separate those and um, it's just easier to go ahead and attach them so that we don't have to worry about it moving around. So I'm going to go ahead and select the corresponding dart piece, selected and duplicated, and when it's ready we're going to move it into the layer above. Great, uh, last piece we need is the back piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the back piece here, duplicate, wait for it. There we go, and then I'm gonna add it to the layer above. Actually the little um, title here is move selection to layer above. I don't wanna confuse anybody. Okay, so now we've got all three pieces in our custom layer, and I'm going to go ahead and make layer one invisible. Um, if you want to add any of the other, you know, the grain line or stretch lines or fold lines, um, I would recommend just doing that after you've made all your changes, and you can go ahead and, and take any of the information that you uh, find relevant for when you're cutting out your pattern pieces. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this invisible. And there's our pieces. Okay, so next thing is I'm going to go ahead and select my cursor, the normal cursor, and select both the dart and the front pattern piece. And I'm going to go ahead and group these together because I don't want the dart to move out of place. I want them to move together. So we're going to go ahead and hit object and select 
the group button or control G. Okay, once you've seen the dotted lines disappear, that means that now this is one object. That's exactly what we want. Okay, um, then this pattern piece is obviously upside down. So let's go ahead and write him the right way or just um, turn him so that he's in the same direction as this one. You can do that by selecting the piece and then selecting it again, and then your arrows will turn. I've also learned that you can, I'm gonna deselect it, you can just come up onto a, an object, and if you click once, it will select it, and then if you click again, it will change the arrows. But if you double click an object quickly, it will select it with the nodes. So that's just a little, um, a little handy, Thing to know if you're starting to pick up the pace and able to move along and you're wanting to do things a little quicker. Um, so let's go ahead and just select it. Oops, that's no, not letting me undo nodes. Okay, so we're going to select it twice and we're going to rotate it by grabbing one of the corner pieces. And this is a little bit tricky. We want to line up the line with the dotted line perfectly. Okay, so now you can see that they were completely lined up, they are lined up, and um, now we can go ahead and move it wherever we'd like. Um, and we can also move this one around, but um, I'm going to create an anchor point so that these two pieces um, are lined up together. I'd like for both of them to have a guide. Um, usually there is a node right on the waistline and so I'm going to use those to our advantage uh, by coming up here into the ruler in the top and clicking and dragging down and that will give us a guideline that we can place wherever we'd like. Um, and so we're going to use those as waste point guidelines and so this one's already selected, so I'm just going to grab it and bring the waistline close to the guideline. And you can see that there's a red X that basically just marks the spot for the waistline node. So I'm going to go ahead and place that bodice piece there and then bring the second one up to the same point. And so now they are both in the same spot next to each other. This is going to be very helpful in a minute. Um, so now that we have those side by side, I'm going to go ahead and just label this one waistline. Okay, let's see labeled. And I'm going to move that just in between them so that we can see it when we zoom in. I'm going to zoom in a bit because we are kind of far away. Okay, zoom in some more. That's good. All right. Okay, next thing that we need to do is um, decide where we're going to add length. Um, so depending on whoever you're making the pattern pieces for, either someone else or yourself, it's a good idea to have your measurements taken um, and um, not just measurements around, but measurements from different points on your body. So let's say from your um, underarm to your waist, your waist to your upper hip, um, you know, those types of proportional measurements so that you can make these adjustments um, very easily, but also very accurately. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make up an arbitrary adjustment. We're going to add um, an inch and a half to the bottom portion of the bodice. So this is assuming that somebody um, has a normal um, like shoulder to waist measurement, but they need a little extra length when it comes to the distance between their waist and their high hip. Okay, so the next guideline that I'm going to pull down, we're going to set right around here. Okay, 
and a lot of times pattern pieces will actually come with a, a slash line and it will tell you to add or remove length here. Um, this particular pattern piece does not, but if you come across pattern pieces that have that, definitely go ahead and just mark this line wherever that line might be. Okay, and then we've decided that we need an additional inch and a half. So to make that measurement, we're gonna come up here. I don't use millimeters, I use inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to inches. Um, and then I'm gonna select my ruler. Okay, it's also set in inches, you can see up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure from the slash line and all you have to do is click and drag and then you can see the measurements start um, moving around as you move the cursor. So I'm going to try and get it as close to one and a half as I can. I think 1.53 is pretty good. So I'm going to leave that there and then I'm going to come up to the ruler up top and click and drag down another guideline. And this guideline is going to be the amount of added space that we're adding, and, and you'll see in just a minute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit more because I want to be able to see these nodes that we're, that we're going to be working with. These are really important to make sure they are as lined up as possible because those are the ones that will ensure that your pattern piece is straight. Okay, so let's see. We can move it around. Let's go ahead and unselect everything. All we need to do is move that one right there. Great, okay. So let's go ahead and add some more um, labels. This is the slash line, just so that we don't confuse it. And then this one, the space between these lines is the needed length. Okay. All right, so now what? Now I'm gonna scoot over so that we can see the area that we are working on. So the waistline, we are not making any sort of changes there. We don't wanna touch that area. The slash line is where we need to cut. So if you imagine an actual paper pattern piece, if you were trying to make this adjustment on paper, um, the slash line is where you would actually take your scissors and cut across that line if you were adding length. If you were removing length, that's where you would fold your paper over itself to remove some of the length. So we're gonna go ahead and duplicate um, slashing this line. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and use our nodes cursor and go ahead and select your pattern piece. And on the slash line, this is where you wanna be a little close so that you can see what's going on. You want to try and get a node right where the pattern piece and the slash line intersect. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we want another one over here. And that looks okay, but it looks like it might be a little off. So let's get closer just to double check. Yeah, that one looks just a little bit off and you can just pick it up and move it so that it's perfectly on that line. Okay, great, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out because now we're a little too close. And here comes the fun part. So we have this node selected just because that's the last thing that we um, were working with. Go ahead and hit your shift button on your keyboard and select this node as well. And so now you'll see that both of those nodes are uh, selected and they should be blue. Okay. And now there are two steps that we need to take to slash that line. 
The first one is finding the button up here with all of the little dots and symbols. There is one that is labeled break path at selected nodes. So we want to go ahead and click that. And when we do click that, the nodes will look like they've gotten smaller and like they now have a circle around both of them. Okay, now step number two, we want to come up to path and break apart. This is going to be the actual slashing. Okay, so to make sure that you um, can see that it's happened, look for the two boxes. You should see one box selection and then an overlap of the little ants and then another box selection for the top half. That just lets us know that we now have two pieces where, um, where we originally only had the one pattern piece. So that means that we did it. Now all we have to do is grab our regular cursor. We're going to select the bottom half because we want to take this bottom piece and move it down and we're moving it to the need length line where we put that little node and the pattern piece. Oh, whoops. Um, make sure that you have only selected one. You want to deselect and then select the correct one. So don't do that. If you do happen to do that, just hit the edit button and hit undo move and then try again. So we're going to um, deselect everything by clicking outside. And then we're going to select the bottom piece. Now you can see that there's just the one box selected and we're going to grab this piece and move it down here. And you can see how it just um, kind of attached itself to that little uh, anchor point that we made previously on the guideline. And that made it super easy, right? So now the next step that we need to do is reconnect these lines and that is super easy. So we're going to select our cursor with the nodes and we're going to select this bottom pattern piece and we're going to hit the shift button and select the top piece as well. And now you can see that we can um, see the nodes for both pieces. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select one node here and we need to connect it to the top node. So hit shift and then also select that top node. And now these both should be selected and they should be blue. And to connect those, we're going to come back up here to the funny little buttons with all the little dots and lines. And we're going to look for the one that says join selected end nodes with a new segment. And voila, we now have a connected node, a uh, pair of nodes, and the pattern piece no longer has that hole. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one, shift, select, and we're going to join selected end nodes with a new segment. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's only one more thing that needs to happen. You can see this uh, wonky line here. We don't have waists or hips like that, so we just need to smooth that out. Um, and to do that, I'm going to go ahead and deselect out here, and then I'm going to come back and select just the one node in the middle and smooth it out. You can play around with this. Um, sometimes it helps to zoom out a bit just to see the overall piece, and I'd say that looks pretty good. I would cut that line as is. Okay. So that was easy, right? Now the only thing you need to do is the same thing on the other piece. So I'm going to scroll over this way and do it all over again. So I'm going to go ahead and select. And this is the waistline. We don't want to do anything there. And here is the slash line. That's where we want to work. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit. And we just need to add a node there. And I'm adding nodes by double clicking with the node cursor where I want them to be. And again, you can 
come in a little closer just to make sure that they're lining up. You want them to, to kind of be in the center of both of those lines. That looks pretty good. And then here's um, something that I learned for this other guideline, the one that we are bringing the slash line down to. We previously had a guideline that we used a little anchor for. Um, I tried to grab the same anchor and just drag it over here, but that also allows the guideline to move. So instead of doing that, I started just grabbing another guideline, bring it down here, and uh, line that new node in the correct point. And that looks like it's pretty well um, situated there. And so now we just need to do our slash. So again, we do that by selecting the slash node. And we want to select the other one, so we hit shift and select the other one. Now they're both selected. We're going to come up here and there's two parts, remember? We need to break the selected nodes. So break path at selected nodes. Okay, now there's little circles around the blue selected nodes. And then we're going to come up here to path and break apart. Now you have two separate pieces and they are both selected. So click outside the box. None, none of them are selected anymore. Excuse me, we want to work with the bottom one. So I went ahead and selected that and use your regular cursor to move the piece. So I'm gonna click on this and drag it down and it snaps right into place. That's so nice. I'm gonna scroll down just a bit. And now all we have to do is reconnect these two um, pieces here. And so we're gonna do that by uh, selecting the nodes. So select this one. And then to see the nodes on the top, we're gonna hit shift and select this one. And then we can go ahead and select the second node here. Now you can see those are both selected. They're both blue. And look for our handy dandy button, join selected end nodes with a new segment. And there you go. And we'll do the same on this side. Uh-oh. So these can be a little sticky. I accidentally moved that. So I'm just going to click again so that it lets it go. Then I'm just going to come up to edit and undo. There we go. Okay. Sometimes it takes a couple of undos to get it to actually undo. So let's see. This is selected and we need the bottom to show its nodes. So I'm hitting shift and selecting with the nodes. There we go. Now I can go ahead and select and shift and select. And then we can add the new segment. Great. Oh no, it deleted my first one. Oh, I must have undid, undid too many times. Okay, so we'll just select this one and select the bottom one and add the segment. There we go. Okay, so now that that's done, um, you can see this is wonky as well, so I'm going to click outside, and then I'm going to come up here and click on just the one so that I can move it and smooth it out. Okay, that looks pretty good. And that is it. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so that we can see the entire pattern piece, pieces. And now we have two uh, pattern pieces in a custom length. Um, just a little side note, if you are, if you need to make other adjustments aside from just the length, so say you, you've blended um, a pattern piece between two sizes and um, you also need to add or remove length, I would definitely blend the two sizes before I touch the length because um, I think that's just a little easier to work with um, without having to 
do too many adjustments. So there's kind of like an, uh, an order of operations. So you want to work with the original pattern pieces as much as possible in the beginning when you have multiple pieces. So you blend two sizes and get your custom size. Then you can take the custom size and put it in a, in a, a layer. And then you can add or remove the, um, the lengths that you need. All right, so that is it for this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and um, do some labeling here. You can label your pieces with whatever information that you find relevant for when it comes time to uh, project your pieces. Fold line. Fold line tends to be helpful. And outside of that, this is just about ready to get saved. So to do that, I'm going to show you the saving process. Before I go, you just use your regular cursor, select everything. Um, you can choose to keep these guidelines or remove them as well whatever makes you happy. And then you can come up to your file and save as. Um, I uh, recently started doing this um, in the file name Try to be as descriptive as possible. So say this is a size, uh, say it's a size four, and you've done custom length and 1.5 inches added. You can see that I've done this one time before. Um, I've been playing with some of my recording programs and editing programs so um, I'm just trying to see what works best but yeah you can go ahead and save this with a lot of information so that you don't have to open and close a bunch of files and just see what it is that this one has had changed to it then you want to change this to a pdf and save and hit ok and then I'm just going to show you, that's this one up here, what that looks like. So this is what it should look like when you open it up in Adobe. Um, and then always be sure to enter your magic calibration number. For me, that's 27.4. Um, and then I like to close this and move this around. But now it's ready to project. So you can go ahead and... Um, establish a connection with your projector, get your cutting area ready to go, and cut out your new customized pattern. Um, and if you have done several adjustments or just the one adjustment, um, I'm sure that being able to do this in Inkscape will just make your life that much easier. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm having so much fun making these videos and also um, pushing myself to learn some of these different techniques. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube. I've been following some of our own members in the Facebook group for projector um, sewing. And there's just so much information on it and there's really so much that can be done with this program. So it's really exciting. Um, thank you so much. If you have any requests or questions or comments, please drop them down below. I'll be sure to get back to those um, as quickly as I can, and hopefully I'll be back with another uh, video for you soon. Thanks, and I hope you have a great sewing day.